Easily the most important thing about making gyros at home is the seasonings. Garam masala. Marjoram. Cumin, of course. And plenty of minced garlic. Looks like I need some more. I've added all of these to a pound of grass-fed, organic, antibiotic-free ground beef. Now I'm going to slowly saute it and simmer it until all those herbs and spices have an opportunity to bloom into the meat. Feel free to salt and pepper the meat while it's in the pan as well. And while that's happening, I'm going to start working on the other components of a gyro. For starters, plenty of cucumber, English cucumber. Those are the ones wrapped in cellophane at the store. They have a lot less seeds in them. I'm going to take a nice sized chunk, knock it in half, of course, to make it safer. And then using the front of my fingernails as a guide, I'm going to cut that into absolutely the thinnest half moons I possibly can. Why is it so important to cut them so thin? They're going to soften as a result of both being heavily salted and then rinsed, and then also dropped into a very simple marinade that you're going to make shortly. They're going to be kind of like a wilted salad on the top of your warm meat. Now I'm going to take a dozen or so grape or cherry tomatoes, also slice them as thinly as I can, and then mince them. The idea is to expose as much of the inside of the tomato as I can to the salt. Again, to try and draw as much of the liquid out of them as possible. I want the tomato flavor and the texture, but not necessarily all the liquid that's inside the tomato. Here comes the colander, where I'm going to combine the tomato and the cucumber and salt again. I'm going to toss them and then throw them in the sink. While they're in the sink, make yourself that vinaigrette. It's a plain, unflavored oil. <coughs> Plenty of lemon juice, about a tablespoon. Salt and pepper, of course. And then more minced garlic. You can never use enough minced garlic. You're going to whisk them all together until they take on one color, one viscosity. This is called creating a suspension, and it's going to even out the flavor. Here comes that pepper grinder again. You think you should just leave the lid off of it. And what makes it the tzatziki sauce? Plenty of dill. They used to grow it in the garden, but 
Now it's winter, so I don't have any fresh. So this is going to have to do. I've used plenty of it. Whisk all those flavors together until they're nice and heterogeneous. This is something you want to make ahead of time so that, again, the dill has a chance to come out and flavor your sauce. What's going on here is something completely gratuitous. Now, in most households, you would just dip your sweet potato fries out of the air fryer into ketchup, I guess. Not at my house. This is a combination of sour cream, a couple tablespoons of mayonnaise, and about as much Frank's Red Hot as the members of my household can stand. Mmm, delicious. got a little overheated, so I'm going to add another big honking tablespoon of mayonnaise. Trust me, this stuff never goes to waste. You're looking for a combination of both heat and that sweetness from the mayonnaise. Well, I completely biffed it here. I cut the pitas and put them in a sort of a roasting cooling rack in a 375 degree oven and overcooked the heck out of them. Can't use those anymore. Fortunately, I had a few more. So with the sweet potato fries already on the plate, I can hold up the gyro when I'm finished with it. First, I'm going to Fill the entire bottom with the seasoned meat. Then comes the salad, the cucumber and tomato in the marinade. You're going to want to cover all the meat. This adds a nice, cool, crisp texture to the warm meat. And then lastly comes the tzatziki sauce. That was the combination of sour cream and mayonnaise and fresh dill, if you have it. In this case, the dill out of the jar. Delicious. Dinner is served.